My fellow Singaporeans, welcome to the very first episode of Lim Tian Unleashed, where I shall give you my unvarnished account of various news items from around our nation that affect us all as Singaporeans. In today's episode, I will talk about the very concerning news that elderly suicide is rising. Also, the ridiculous latest invention of the PAP, which they are now calling Care Shield. And finally, about the potential alliance of seven opposition parties. Firstly, I was saddened to hear the news reported that there has been a spike in elderly suicide rates. We already have around 500 suicides per year across all age groups. That's one suicide every 36 hours or so. Now, while suicide is a global problem, we in Singapore do far less than other nations to address the problem. Firstly, suicide is still technically a crime in Singapore. This is not only ludicrous, but is an obstacle in actively addressing the issue. When we treat it as shameful and taboo, it means we do not measure suicide effectively. Most suicide attempts do not result in suicide. And yet, because our government buries the issue, we do not have accurate figures about how many suicide attempts were made. And before those attempts, how many people have suicidal thoughts? Crucially, it is at the steps long before a suicide attempt is made that the victim needs help and support. Help and support that is just not adequately available in our nation. To hear that more of our elderly are choosing suicide is saddening for citizens and damning of the government's creation of a nation that crushes the hopes of people who feel they have no support. They cannot afford life. They are a burden, literally a feeling of nothing left to live for. A Singapore more concerned with GDP and the bottom line than the individual quality of life led by its citizens. Desmond Lee, you are the minister in charge of social and family development. And if you remain devoid of effective policies and vehicles to promote a better quality of life, then I fear Singaporeans shall not see a reduction in suicide rates, and worse still, maybe more of an increase. I also have a problem with the way the government tries to create separation of citizens. Reporting that there is a rise in elderly suicide means we don't talk about all the younger people who commit suicide, especially our young men whom have seen suicide rates rise in recent years. Whether a suicide victim is 17 or 72, it is our loss and our pro problem collectively. We are a nation as a whole, and the government should be doing more to promote mental well-being and community support, not least to mitigate the recent onslaught of increasing taxes, utility hikes, and a general cost of living. It's crushing. You know, the mainstream media reports it as the problem of an aging population. But my fellow friends, it is not that. It is because these elderly people do not have enough money to survive, to live on. Now, also in recent news is the latest addition to our already confusing and tangled healthcare structure. Yet another shield has been thrust upon us, and this time it is called Care Shield. Sounds great, and yet, like so many policies, falls far short of its meaning. To me, it seems this is a shield to shield the government from their responsibilities. Care Shield is replacing Elder Shield. Elder Shield was a voluntary scheme you could pay into at the age of 40 to cover living expenses if you became disabled in older life. Care Shield is mandatory from the age of 30. That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And it is ridiculous. Now, the government says that one in two of us will become disabled in elderly life, and we must pay for that care. 
I have a great problem with those statistics, my fellow Singaporeans. Really? 50% of us will be disabled? Do half of the elderly people that you know today need assistance in eating, dressing, going to the bathroom? I know for me that I'm inspired and impressed at how many of our elder peers are so robust and healthy. But if I'm wrong, and I'm just lucky enough to be surrounded by 50% who are non-disabled, then what on earth are we doing about our well-being? Are we just destined to become a nation of disabled or suicidal elderly people as we enter our golden years? No! The government is just whittling everything down to the bottom line. Oh, we are getting more frail as a nation. And who's going to pay for that? If the PAP saw us all as citizens, as part of a citizenry, the dilemma would be, oh, we are all getting more frail as a nation, and so how do we change that and promote well-being and happiness? It's the PAP's constant separation and division of our citizenry that I have a big issue with. Gan Kim Yong is our health minister and thus in charge of all these matters. Now some may argue, and I, be, I would be one of them, that we should have had a better health minister put in place after the hepatitis C debacle of recent years and other issues. But Gan Kim Yong is who we have, and so I ask you, really? Is a new shield the best you can do? You know, Elder Shield made a profit of $3.1 billion. Yes, that's right. Elder Shield collected premiums of $3.3 billion and paid out less than $230 million in claims and rebates. Why should any healthcare program, any Shield, be making such money? It must be the best business in town. What happened to the excess premiums? And why the need to change the shield to something more expensive when there was a surplus anyway? It just makes no sense, my friends. It's scary. You know what I will call the new program? I will call it Scare Shield. Because it is that scary. It is that unfair. In keeping with the division and separation of us as citizens, this new scare shield divides women from men. Women live longer than men. That is a fact, and it is something we should provide for as a nation. I think it is absolutely wrong that the PAP with this new shield requires women to pay more than men because they live longer. We are not separate islands existing side by side. We are a nation, a community that deserves support and inclusion. Whether you are a five-year-old boy, an 80-year-old woman, someone who's depressed, or someone who's at the height of his or her career. But this seems to be lost on the PAP. But this week, we at least saw some good news, some light, some unity, some coming together. Seven opposition parties called for an alliance and asked Dr. Tan Cheng Bok to be our leader. I myself attended as I believe that a unified approach is always a stronger vehicle than parties who believe their isolation is a strength. The PAP are an example of how an isolated party can grow into a vehicle that is out of touch and begins to miss the mark over and over again. The seed of an alliance has been born. An alliance that invited all opposition to come together. I have read many social media comments about why the Workers' Party is absent. They are invited. Make no bones about that. The Workers' Party is invited. They are included. 
And I hope that once they have completed their internal process over <clears throat> the new leadership which they are busy with at the moment, they will indeed join our unified effort. Much more about the Alliance will be revealed in the coming weeks. It is a process that cannot be stopped. My friends, I thank you for watching this first episode. If you would like to send in your comments or you have a topic that you want me to include in subsequent episodes, please message me on Facebook. If you would like to be on the show or be part of the show, then please send me that message too. And until we meet again, thank you once again for watching.